Tennel Sports Central will be going over our next full prediction of this 2020 offseason, and it will be over the Alabama Crimson Tide. And this was a team that went 11 and 2 in the 2019 season. And once again, I mean, it was a bit of a disappointment of a season for Alabama, of course, compared to how they've done in the past. Uh, it was a bit of a disappointment, 11 and 2. I mean, they still were able to go uh, to a pretty decent bowl game, got a good bowl win last season, but. Once again, overall, a bit of a disappointment about how they be in 2020 and whether or not they can win another national championship next season is what we're going over here today. We're going to be going over a full preview and prediction on Alabama as well as giving you guys the returning production. So with that, let's look at your season trends for Alabama this past season. Once again, they are 11-2 uh, in the 2019 season. And overall, they were uh, very consistent throughout the season. They were 8-0 between September and October. And they easily looked like one of the best teams in the nation. However, uh, right around then was when Tua got injured and their season kind of went downhill after that. They were 3-2 and two between November and the postseason. And I mean, Mac Jones, he's a great quarterback, no doubt. But I'm sure uh, with having to take Tua out at that point in the season, it just was kind of a rough adjustment. That's kind of what it looked like for Alabama in the later parts of last season. Overall, though, they had a lot of great wins last season. They had a big win over South Carolina on the road, 47-23. to They also had a big win against Texas A&M in college station 47 to 28 they also had a big win against Tennessee 35 to 13 and that was actually in late October when that game was and of course Tennessee they improved a ton over last season and I mean to get a big win like that uh, at that point in the season was a really good win for Alabama they also had a big win against Mississippi State on the road 38 to 7 and then they finished off the season with a big bull win against Michigan, 35 to 16. Once again, uh, I know they made it to the Citrus Bowl, which overall that's not anything compared to how uh, or the bowl games that they've been to in the past. But still, it was a great season in the end for Alabama. Moving on to your returning production for this team next season, they do lose their star quarterback to Atego Viola. He's going to the NFL. Of course, he was drafted uh, pretty early on in the previous NFL draft. Their second quarterback in Max Jones is returning going into 2020. So that's going to be a big return for this team. And in the end, I mean, for Mac Jones, I mean, we saw him a little bit last season. He was able to put up over 1,500 yards with 14 touchdowns and three interceptions last season. So, yeah, overall, still he had a pretty good season. Um, in the end, though, Tua was the main quarterback. Of course, he put up over 2,800 yards with 33 touchdowns and three interceptions last season. So, yeah, two overall put up better stats, and I think he's going to have a great career in the NFL. I mean, for him to put up 33 touchdowns and only three interceptions through that uh, was very impressive out of two of last season. Looking at the running back situation, Najee Harris will return for his senior season, which is also huge. He had over 1,500 yards with 20 touchdowns last season, and they also returned their top wide receiver in Devontae Smith, which he had just over 1,500 yards with 20 touchdowns last season. So, I mean, overall, the running back and wide receiver situations look really good with Najee Harris and Devontae Smith. And then, of course, the quarterback situation with having uh, Mac Jones, I think they'll be just fine there as well. Looking at the rest of their wide receiver situation, they do lose their second receiver, Jerry Judy, as he is going to the NFL, or he was drafted, and he had over 1,100 yards with 10 touchdowns last season. Then Henry Ruggs, of course, he was also drafted pretty early on in the NFL draft, and he put up some really good stats too, as he just had over 800 yards with eight touchdowns last season. As far as the offensive line goes, they lose two on the offensive line. They also lose one on the defensive line and one linebacker, and then they lose three in the secondary. So that's really where my main concern is for Alabama next season is in the secondary as they do lose three starters there. Big question, though, for Alabama next season. Is Mac Jones, their quarterback, able to lead a team to the cultural playoff? And it's really tough to say right now. Once again, I mean, he's still a pretty young quarterback, and I think he's got a ton of potential, too. Uh, but once again, I mean, it's still tough to say with how early on it is. And, uh, but yeah, he did put up some, once again, he did put up some decent stats while he did play last season, over 1,500 yards with right around 14 touchdowns and three interceptions last season. So once again, yeah, Mac Jones, definitely a quarterback that I think should have a good season next year if he's able to have good talent around him, which obviously with Devontae Smith and Devon, yeah, and Najee Harris, I think Alabama will be just fine in the offensive category. As far as chances of another college football playoff run, I think it's bit, pretty big for Alabama. It depends, once again, on how Mac Jones is. If Mac Jones is a great quarterback, as I expect him to be, I think Alabama is a main contender for sure. I think that they should be right around the top of the SEC. And I also think that Alabama could make a big, deep run um, in the, into the college football playoffs. So, yes, yeah, certainly I think Alabama is a big contender to win another national championship in 2020. Moving on to your schedule, though, you start the season against USC. That's going to be a big game. Uh, it's in a neutral location, so really no team's a home team. I believe it's in 
uh, some city in Texas, I don't remember for sure, but that USC game will be big. I think USC next season is going to be one of the better teams in the Pac-12. So yeah, for Alabama, uh, watch out for that one there. But nonetheless, you got Georgia State in the next week at home. Should be an easy one there. Then you get your first really big game, or first conference game for that matter, against Georgia on the 19th. You've got them in Tuscaloosa. Then you got Kent State on the 26th to finish off September. As far as your October looks, you got two road games at Ole Miss and Arkansas. Not two very tough games. Then you got Mississippi State at home, followed by Tennessee, a big road game on the 24th. Then in November, you got LSU on the road. And then you got UT Martin, followed by Texas A&M and Auburn to finish off the season. So yeah, with that, let's look at your uh, September. I'm going to give you a, a 4-0 record through September. Once again, you got two really tough games with USC and Georgia, but I'm giving you two wins there. I think they'll be tougher, once again, as highlighted in the yellow. Those are your tougher wins, uh, wins that I expect them to get within 13 points. Uh, but yeah, USC, definitely big game there. I do expect Alabama to get the win, mainly because, I mean, I think Alabama's going to be more experienced in the end, of course. Uh, they got a big quarterback going into USC now, JT Daniels. He actually announced he was transferring there a couple weeks ago, so watch out for that team for sure. But, I mean, as far as Georgia goes, that's also going to be a big game with um, – uh, of course, Georgia, I expect to be another big team in the SEC. Watch out for them as well. And, yeah, looking at your October next, we got also four wins. I'm going to give you a close win against Ole Miss. And, of course, with that being a road game, that's the main reason why I do have that being a closer win. But then you got Arkansas and Mississippi State. I think those two games will be pretty easy for Alabama, uh, especially the Arkansas game. I really don't think Arkansas will be much of a team next season to watch out for. But Mississippi State, I mean, they could be a team to watch out for with K.J. Costello in there now. Uh, that could be a very interesting team, but but I with it, I think with it being at home in Alabama, I think Alabama gets the win there. Then that Tennessee game, big, big game there. Watch out for it. Uh, Tennessee being on the road in a very tough environment in Neyland. I think that Alabama's going to have a close one there, but I think they get the win in the end. Uh, once again, the, with Tennessee and Jeremy Pruitt, I think that team is definitely uh, one to watch out for in the SEC next season. If you've watched their or any of their previews in general, I mean, they're definitely the big dark horse of the SEC next season. Like, I'd say Tennessee definitely could be compared to, uh, we could say, the Minnesota or the Baylor of 2019. I think they'll be one of those, uh, similar to one of those teams in that factor. They weren't really expected to be very good, uh, but they end up putting up a really big season. As far as your November goes, that's going to be the tougher month. Uh, the good thing is you do have Texas A&M and Auburn at home. So really, I mean, overall, this schedule sets up really well for Alabama to make a big run. I mean, most of your tough games are at home, which is huge. Except, and that that's that's that includes all but one game. That's LSU. That LSU game is going to be on the road, and with that being in a very tough environment, I think that LSU gets the win there in the end. I mean, we all know how good LSU plays in November in general, and with it being at home, it's going to be a really tough one for Alabama. I think I think they take a loss there, but once again, that's their only loss I think of this entire season. As far as the rest of the season goes, UT Martin shouldn't even think about that game. That's going to be a win. And then those Texas A&M and Auburn games will both be big. I think they're both going to be really close. But I think Alabama gets the edge there because, one, they've had the experience of LSU, and I think that's going to uh, kind of fuel their fire for the rest of the season. And I also think with them being at home, that's going to be big for Alabama too. So, yeah, your record or yeah, your record prediction for Alabama next season is going to be 11 and 1. I think Alabama's going to be a great team next season once again. And a big factor of that is going to be depending on how well Mac Jones plays. Once again, if Mac Jones doesn't play very well, uh, if he doesn't really live up to Tua's standards, I think Alabama could be a team that we're, where we could see them fall to like 10 and 2 or maybe even 9 and 3. But in the end, I think he plays very well and he ends up going 11 and 1. Uh, once again, I think that Alabama definitely is a team to watch out for. But uh, yeah, in the end, once again, the schedule really sets up well for Alabama to have a big season. I mean, when you got Texas A&M and Auburn, uh, two of your tougher opponents all at home, you also have Georgia at home. Can't forget about that, too. So once again, really sets up well for Alabama to have a great season. So in the end, that about wraps up this final prediction. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Alabama. Let me know whether you think any differently. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to slap a like on it and subscribe as well if you enjoyed this video be sure to stay tuned for more from all sports central let me know your thoughts once again in the comments below on alabama and i will see you all later